Hi. So in this video, I wanted to make a presentation about a um, military card regarding uh, armored vehicles and its connection to the um, what's usually called as a Yugoslav Wars or Balkan Wars or uh, Bosnian War also as well and, and so on. And uh, one of the reasons I'm actually making this video is because this year it's, um, well, let's say last year, it was like 30 years since the um, war in uh, ex-Yugoslavia started. And um, this year it's 30 years since the war in Bosnia started. And as you can see on this card, and I'm actually holding it here um, in my hands, I bought it once um, in a second hand shop here in uh, Stockholm. Uh, but the card itself, like the presentation, it's actually in Danish. And um, what can we see here now? Okay, I can understand Danish because I'm also a Swedish speaker. Um, so I will do some shorter translations here for you. Uh, so if you look here on the um, kind of upper right corner, uh, what's stated there, it's the... Um, uh, it's Hans Camp School, which is like um, army's, uh, how to say, like uh, combat school, literally uh, translated. Um, so it's like the, how you call it, like the, the field army, so arm, so to say. And, um, and um, but it's also stated, it's here, it's a um, card for like recognizing armored vehicles. And this was made probably at some point, let's say in uh, 90, beginning of 1990s, so like 1991, 1992. And this is interesting because um, the Danish um, military personnel is a part of the, um, uh, it was first a UN mission called UMPROFOR, United Nations Protection Force. And um, later on, after the war in Bosnia, after 1995, it became, um, or like after the war, it became S for stabilization force, but then the mandate was given to NATO. So what was uh, very special with the Danish military personnel is that um, they even had tanks. So they were using the um, German-made, or even let's say West German-made Leopard 1 tanks. So you can say that the Danish uh, personnel that were contingent, contingent in the, um, the UNPROFOR was, let's say, the, the best equipped one, or let's say if you now sp speak about uh, firepower and um, more heavier equipment. So that's one thing we can see here. And on the left side, you have um, kind of instructions for the military personnel, so how they can report about uh, a certain armored vehicle. So, for example, like how to recognize and uh, report about a vehicle based on vehicles, based on turret, cannon, and other important parts of um, a, a armored vehicle, a tank or armored fighting vehicle is similar. So these are the things we can see. And another interesting thing, in my opinion, if you look on the um, lower right corner, is that you can see actually <laughs> two, tank, two tanks that were already outdated when the war in, um, in Bosnia started, but they were still used. So you have the M4 Sherman, and then you have the T-34. <laughs> now, these were the tanks that were used during the Second World War. So these are, are the tanks that basically kind of, you can say metaphorically, you know, won the Second World War for the Allied forces because uh, Americans and the Soviets were able to produce them in higher numbers than, for example, uh, you know, German, Nazi Germany could produce some of its own tanks. And the um, interesting thing, like why these tanks were even used, like, you know, these kind of very old tanks at that time, well, it's because the the Yugoslav People's Army, so the Yugoslav Armed Forces, actually um, kind of didn't want to get rid of them. 
because one of the uh, ideas of this kind of concept of total defense in uh, ex-Yugoslavia was to even use old equipment, old tanks, old uh, trucks, old airplanes, everything in order to, um, to use it in the case of war. So even these like Sherman's and T-34s were um, still uh, in military storages. And um, when the war started, so these storages were opened and uh, these tanks were mobilized and, and used. Um, I would say that the T-34 was much more used than the Sherman tank because um, if I remember right, there was a larger number of T-34s. And it's very interesting, what you can see here is uh, part of the kind of early history of uh, socialist Yugoslavia, because uh, during, let's say, the 1940s, I mean, after the Second World War and 1950s, so Yugoslavia was receiving military equipment both from the uh, Soviets and from the United States. So despite being officially a communist and a socialist um, state and country, uh, Yugoslavia was, for example, never part of the Warsaw Pact, and it placed itself as a, let's say, neutral state, and it even formed its own um, bloc called the Non-Aligned Movement, together for, for example, India and Egypt. So this is why both American and Russian equipment were used during the wars um, in ex-Yugoslavia, mostly let's say Soviet equipment, but even here you can see the M47 a medium tank, which was actually, or Patton, which was a standard standard tank for the American armed forces, for example, in, during 1950s and um, 1960s. So now if we actually uh, go to the um, other side, so, the, so there are like two sides of the, of the card. You can see here, uh, for example, is um, you have also had the M36 uh, gun carrier or like a tanks destroyer. And that was also a very like Second World War era vehicle, but it was still used during the these wars like in Croatia and Bosnia. And they were actually even used during the Kosovo War so like um, in later 90s. And if I remember right, there was this kind of like a funny photo of um, kind of modern American tanks passing by a very old American tank, but at that time was still used uh, during the war. So, and um, here you also have more focus on um, other aspects and not only vehicles, for example, you can see the, um, so there is, for example, D-44 and T-12. So these were actually, or they are still uh, anti-tank guns, Soviet made. And um, if, uh, if I remember right, so the Yugoslav Armed Forces was actually mainly using the T-12 100 millimeter anti-tank gun. Um, so these guns were actually mainly used, like in most cases, not against tanks, but they were more used as a kind of a field artillery. So they were used for, unfortunately, like sadly, for shelling, shelling cities, urban areas um, against uh, entrenched positions and for, for similar um, actions. And uh, one interesting case is that these guns are actually still used if you have been following the the current war in Ukraine since 2014. So uh, both the Ukrainian armed forces and the, the separatist armed forces are actually still using them. And um, also there is some more additional text here. So these, these are like aberrations. Uh, for example, you have the KVG uh, stands for Kampfwagen, which basically means fighting vehicle or combat vehicle. And there is also, for example, let's say, um, uh, L, or let's say Lima Victor Mike, which stands for the, I'm not sure how you like, Danish is a little bit pronounced differently from Swedish, but I understand the word. It's like a, um, anti-air 
uh, how we call it, like anti-error system, like um, MISO, so to say. And there is also the AMF, so Alpha Mike uh, Foxtrot, and it's for like amphibious. So, and you can see here actually, oh, yeah, you can see that the card was actually made in September, it says September 1993. Actually, I, I didn't see that detail until now, so I kind of became a little bit surprised. And um, I think that it's kind of very interesting to study like the card itself because um, it's a small, how to say, piece of history. But if you connect it to some larger, let's say, developments, if you connect it to other aspects, other um, facts, then you do get like a more deeper understanding for how things were um, done. You know, history is very much about understanding transactions, you know, between people, between people and machines. So transactions and interactions, let's say like that. And just by studying this uh, military, over like a military card or like military overview, um, you can get some more additional insights and information. So uh, thank you very much for uh, listening and um, please follow my channel Vlad's History for additional videos. Thank you.